guys some updates in regards to the United States, North Korea, Japan, and China. And we're going to touch base on Russia just a little bit. But here were the top headlines within the last 48 hours. North Korea threatens to strike U.S. bases in Asian Pacific and South Korean presidential palace if the United States attacks. We will go to war if they choose, says North Korea, warning Trump not to provoke him. The U.S. may launch strike if North Korea reaches for the nuclear trigger. North Korea may be capable of serene-tipped missiles. Japan is readying for a North Korean emergency. Air China cancels some Beijing-North Korean flights. China warns World War III is in inevitable as North Korea prepares for their latest nuclear test. U.S.-North Korean war may break out by mistake if North Korea provokes Trump, experts are warning. North Korea says the thermal nuclear war could start at any moment, and the U.S. is on the brink of World War III. U.S. has dropped the largest non-nuclear bomb in Afghanistan, calling it the mother of all bombs. However, Russia has the father of all bombs, and it is four times more powerful than Trump's mother of all bombs that killed 36 IS militants in Afghanistan. China has flaunted its mighty missiles on state TV as Beijing urges North Korea to give up its nuclear ambitions. And the Pentagon is getting ready to protect the electric grid from a massive attack. Let's start with this headline in regards to North Korea stating thermal nuclear war could start at any moment and the U.S. is on the brink of World War III. North Korea's vice foreign minister claimed the president of the United States would be to blame after a series of antagonizing military exercises and tweets. The vice minister stated that the country was ready to use its powerful nuclear deterrent if President Trump continues to provoke North Korea. He said, we will go to war if they choose. If the U.S. comes with reckless military maneuvers, then we will confront it with the DPRK's preemptive strike. We've got a powerful nuclear deterrent already in our hands, and we certainly will not keep our arms crossed in the face of a U.S. preemptive strike. North Korea's KCNA news agency added in a statement that the U.S. introduces into the Korean Peninsula, the world's biggest hotspot, huge nuclear strategic assets, seriously threatening peace and security of the peninsula and pushing the situation to the brink of war. This has created a dangerous situation in which a thermal nuclear war may break out at any any moment on the peninsula and posed serious threat to the world peace and security to say nothing of those in Northeast Asia. And North Korea isn't the only one warning that war is just about to break out at any moment. China's foreign minister also is warning that an armed conflict with North Korea may break out at any moment, urging Washington and North Korea to tone down their hawkish rhetoric and realize the price to pay for both sides if a new Korean war were to start. The extraordinary warning comes amid massive U.S. military buildup near the Korean Peninsula with the carrier strike group USS Carl Vinson headed towards the region. While U.S. President Donald Trump is threatening to take care of the North Korean problem, North Korea says it is ready to repel any military action. Lately, tensions have risen with the U.S. and the ROK on one side and the DPRK on the other. He cautioned both sides that if a war occurs, the result is a situation in which everybody loses and there can be no winner, and that whichever side provoked a conflict must assume the historic responsibility and pay the corresponding price. Earlier in the day, he stated that Washington and North Korea must refrain from provoking and threatening each other, whether in words or actions, and not let the situation get to an irreversible and unmanageable state. He also stated that force cannot solve the problem. Dialogue can be the only channel to resolving the problem. China, North Korea's close ally and main trading partner, does not welcome North Korea's nuclear program, but advocates finding political solution to the crisis. For its part, Russia, which also shares a land border with the reclusive state, expressed deep concern over the mounting tensions on the Korean Peninsula. The tension on the Korean Peninsula was one of the topics Wang Yi 
discussed with the Russian counterpart Sergei Lavrov in a Friday phone call. Moscow stands for political diplomatic reconciliation and urges all parties to show patience and refrain from any actions which might mean making provocative steps. So now we're hearing Russia's advice. Very interesting. If a war were to break out between the United States and North Korea, would Russia protect North Korea. This could literally turn into a world war, you guys. But let's move on to the next headline. China has mobilized 25,000 extra troops to North Korea and puts the country on nationwide alert. All five military regions from China have been ordered by Beijing to maintain readiness for the possibility of a conflict along their border. China has already sent 150,000 troops to the North Korean border on Sunday, as reported by Taiwan's China Post. And we cannot leave out Japan. The Japan News is stating that Japan readying for North Korea emergency. The Japanese government, which has asked the United States to provide advanced consultation if it decides to launch military action against North Korea, has ramped up preparations for unexpected situations. The Japanese government anticipates the possibility of a joint response with the United States should a contingency arise. The Prime Minister stressed on Wednesday that the region is becoming increasingly tense. And U.S. President Donald Trump has stated that all options are on the table. It's a fact. Tensions are rising, stated the Prime Minister. If an unexpected situation occurs, we'll ask the United States to cooperate in rescuing the abduction victims. The Trump administration is reviewing U.S. policy toward North Korea and has not ruled out military options, including a preemptive strike. It goes on further to say, during a series of meetings between Japanese and U.S. officials, the Japanese side asked for advanced consultation regarding any U.S. military action against North Korea. The U.S. side is said to have responded positively to the request. This is because Japan would need to take appropriate precautions given that, as an ally of Washington, it could be a target for retaliation should the U.S. military attack North Korea. It is expected that a North Korean attack on Japan would involve ballistic missiles. The Japanese government has been boistering defense measures against ballistic missiles, including making permanent in August 2016 an order to the self-defense forces to intercept and destroy incoming missiles. And the Pentagon is getting ready to protect the electric grid from a massive attack. Amid warnings that North Korea and Iran have plans to take out parts of the U.S. electric grid through a cyber attack or atmospheric nuclear blast, the Pentagon is taking steps to both protect the nation's communications and power lifeline. The Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency has charged BAA systems to map a system that can detect a cyber attack and gin up an alternative communications network for military and civilian use if the grid is fried. Former CIA Director James Woolsey has been warning for years that the grid is extremely vulnerable and recently the Pentagon and some states have taken the warning seriously. Woolsey and former EMP Commission Chief of Staff Peter Vincent Pry have pointed a finger at North Korea which is now threatening the U.S. DARPA's focus is on throttling a cyber attack by Pry and Woolsey have also warned that North Korea or Iran could attack the grid with an atmospheric nuclear explosion over the East Coast that would disable the grid and that would end up leading to the death of 90% of those in the East. The DARPA plan presented in defense systems has several elements to react to an attack. First, it would include ways to sense an imminent attack that would trigger protections. And if damaged, it would have an alternative way for communications killed in the attack to continue in a backup system, key for the military and presumably the financial system. It won't be ready, however, until 2020. In a statement, DARPA said it is interested specifically in early warning of impending attacks, situation awareness, network isolation, and threat characterization in response to a widespread and persistent cyber attack on the power grid and its dependent systems. And it goes on finally to say the purpose for this program is to provide a technology that quickly isolates both the enterprise IP network and the power infrastructure networks to disrupt malicious cyber attacks.
It's about time they're doing something about the electric grid here in the United States. We are definitely too vulnerable right now. But let's move on and talk about Russia briefly. A senior Russian lawmaker is stating that the U.S. is a greater threat to global peace than North Korea. The head of the Foreign Affairs Committee in the Upper House of Russian Parliament said Friday the most alarming thing about the current U.S. administration is that you can't be sure if it is bluffing or really going to implement its threats. He said America objectively poses a greater threat to peace than North Korea, adding that the entire world is scared and left guessing if it strikes or not. He said there is a small hope that President Donald Trump's administration would listen to warnings from Russia and China not to use military force against nuclear armed North Korea. Korea. Definitely wars and rumors of wars and distress of nations. I will keep you guys up to date as these reports continue to come in. And if there is anything crucial over the weekend, you will be hearing from me. So stay tuned. But those are your reports for today. Please do come and visit me on Facebook where I have these stories and many more. Also on our ministry website at www.cww7news.org. All right, you guys, I will talk to you soon. God bless. To the members of the Security Council, I must say enough is enough. Nuclear powers understand their responsibilities. Kim Jong-un shows no such understanding. His abusive use of missiles and his nuclear threats show that he is begging for war. War is never something the United States wants. We don't want it now. But our country's patience is not unlimited. What we've heard uh, from Haley is nothing new, actually. Only yesterday, the U.S. Defense Secretary uh, Jim Mattis said that Washington will use any means necessary to defend itself from North Korea. Um, Washington has been threatening military action for weeks, and the rhetoric, rhetoric has been growing stronger and stronger uh, since the beginning of August when Trump threatened DPRK with uh, fire and fury. Uh, thankfully, it doesn't uh, go beyond threats. Uh, but at the same time, Washington hasn't really proposed a viable solution, uh, except for sanctions, which uh, Russia and China, however, have been calling for uh, North Korea to return to dialogue. A comprehensive settlement to the nuclear and other issues plaguing the Korean Peninsula can be arrived at solely through political and diplomatic channels. We reiterate our readiness to help this process via the implementation of the initiative proposed by Russia and China. A comprehensive settlement to the nuclear and other issues plaguing the Korean Peninsula can be arrived at solely through political and diplomatic channels. We reiterate our readiness to help this process by the implementation of the initiative proposed by Russia and China. China and Russia have proposed an initiative for the denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula. It is practical and feasible and aimed at easing the tensions and preventing further escalation. Uh, Moscow and Beijing has proposed a roadmap uh, for settling the crisis, uh, calling for a freeze on uh, North Korea's uh, nuclear tests and, uh, 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 and U.S. and South Korea's drills. Uh, the double freeze initiative uh, for North Korea has been proposed by uh, China and Russia, which would require North Korea to, to stop its nuclear and ballistic missile tests. And in return, the U.S. and South Korea would stop their military drills. Uh, this is a move that Washington considers to be offensive. The idea that some have suggested a so-called freeze for freeze is insulting. So it looks like for now the situation is in a deadlock, at least until Washington decides that threats and sanctions are counterproductive.